This is Geometry Dash. It's a fast paced game. If you hit those spiky blocks, you die. If you hit the side of a non spiky block, you also die. When you die, you go back to the start. It's pretty hard. Uh, I want to build a similar game to this and create an AI that's going to play the game for me. I'm going to call the game Trigonometric Mash to avoid any copyright infringement issues. So we've got a floor and it's moving and we've got a sprite and or a player and we can jump and we have gravity and the player doesn't fall through the floor so this is good. Let's make those blocks a little bit bigger. I'm still showing some diagnostic colours for the collision. It turns out collision detection is really hard. All right, so let's add some blocks to jump over. And now let's try adding death. So I'm kind of too lazy to deal with like any sort of death animation. So we're just going to pause the game for half a second when you die. So death is working and I can jump and I can land on blocks and jump off them and slide along them. And there was a little bit more collision detection pain to get to this pit. Uh, but like, I'm just going to like let that slide. <laughs> And then lastly, we want to add some bad blocks. Uh, adding the bad blocks is pretty easy. Uh, in the world map, we had one for white blocks, and now we have two for red blocks, for bad blocks. Uh, if you touch the bad blocks in any direction, you die. Uh, so that's all pretty easy. The hard bit was the collision detection that we've already done. Um, yeah, so I think that's the mechanics of the game. And then what we need to start doing now is creating a level. Now I want to avoid my AI being able to just brute force the game. I want the AI to have to react to the world and then to respond appropriately. Uh, maybe not like that. I don't want the AI to simply memorize the map and be able to do the map even blindfold. Now what we can do to prevent this is to change the game slightly and then this forces the AI to have to react to the world. And the way we'll do this is we're going to randomize each map. Let's think about how we can create random maps. So let's say we're looking at the game right now. So this is the game, but we didn't build anything yet. There's no platforms and we don't have the player. Now we could just pick a random position and place a platform and then pick another random position and place a platform and then another and another and another. And look in this case, like the player could come in here and then jump here and then go along and then jump down here go along, jump down here, and they're good. Okay, so we succeeded. But this isn't guaranteed to happen. So for example, like, let's say the player's coming in here, and then we build a bunch of random platforms, and they are all created up here, and maybe over here. But nothing was ever created in the in the middle area. And so what happens now is there's nothing that the player can do. They can't jump from here to over here it's too far so here's my idea we're going to have a a player like a bot like not an actual human just a bot and this bot is going to move through the map let's start by making the map designer bot simply move sideways it doesn't look like it's moving sideways yeah because nothing to compare it to let's start building platform underneath the designer bot ah oh, that makes sense should they be walking in the middle of the blocks like that no let's fix that Great. Can you make the bot jump? Yes, yeah, so let's talk about how to decide when to jump. Motion in games is created by drawing images called frames one after another. When the frames are played back at high speed, we perceive motion. Each frame, the map creator bot will roll a 100 sided dice to see whether they should jump. If they roll 10 or less, then they jump. In Python, you can roll a dice using the randint function. Randint 1, 100 will roll a 100-sided dice. And then our Python code for jumping will be if randint 1, 100 is less than or equal 10, then we jump. And here's how that looks when we add that into the map creator. Nice. Why does the bot always land at the bottom? Yeah, we don't have any logic to stop the bot falling yet. We can add that. So when the bot is falling, it's going to roll another dice. And if it rolls 10 or less, uh, then we're going to build platform underneath it and it's going to stop falling. So here's how that looks. Great. We also want the bot to be able to walk off the edge of a platform without jumping. So when the agent's on a platform, we're going to roll a third dice. If that third dice is 20 or less, then the bot's going to walk off the edge of the platform. 
And this is how that looks. That looks good. How do you decide what dice numbers to use? So I just tried different numbers and saw which looked okay. So if we set the bot to jump if the dice is 50 or less, then it jumps a lot and stays at the top of the screen. If we set the bot to jump only when the dice is 2 or less, like out of 100, then it doesn't really jump at all and it just moves along the bottom. And then for landing, so if the bot lands only if it rolls a 1 out of 100, then it almost always falls to the bottom of the screen. And if the bot lands, if it rolls 50 or less, then it doesn't fall very far. It just kind of slowly walks downhill and then jumps back up again. All right, let's add in some distractor blocks. So let's first draw the trajectory. And now that we've got the trajectory, we can just add in distractor blocks and bad blocks anywhere where it's not the trajectory. I'm going to use a neural network to play the game. The network will take as an input an image of the game and output whether to jump or not. A neural network is made of neurons and connections like a tiny piece of brain. My network has 3 million connections. That's a lot compared to neat networks which have like 10 or 20 connections, but it's much smaller than GPT-3 which has 200 billion connections. And then all of these are tiny compared to the human brain which has 100 trillion connections. We can train a neural network by providing examples of inputs and the corresponding outputs. Unfortunately, in our case, we do not know what the outputs should be. We don't know when the computer should jump. We could play the game ourselves and get the computer to copy us, but I want the computer to learn by itself through its own exploration. We'll give the computer a reward when it finishes the level and punish the computer if it dies. Learning from rewards is hard because the reward is received sometime after the action. Here the AI is jumping. It's going to hit the red block. The reward is still plus zero. Several frames later, the AI dies and gets punished, minus one reward. To learn from this, the AI will predict the total future reward at each position. When the player is heading towards a red block, the predicted future reward will go down. The AI will train its neural network to choose actions that give positive future reward. The AI will control 16 players at the same time. The 16 players will play on the same map. Once all players are finished, we generate a new map. The green lights at the top of the screen show which players are still alive. As the players die, their lights wink out. So at this point, there was actually a whole bunch of coding to do and a, a lot of bugs, like a lot, like pain. But I've squished out those bugs. So let's see what happens.